In this video, I'm going to show you what can happen if you can take advantage of the shellshock exploit. Now, this is all the exploits within Bash, how you can pass a null variable and manage to execute just about anything. So, in the video I did yesterday about shellshock, I said how it's not really a vulnerability for home Linux users because you don't really have an attack vector that can be exploited. In this video, I'm going to show you what can happen if you do have an attack vector available. So what I'll be doing is attacking this victim Linux host using a service that's available and open and allowed through the firewall. So I'm going to take advantage of that, and in this case I'm going to be using SSH. Now I know that kind of defeats the object a bit, but just bear with me and I'll show you what's happening, because it's quite easy to use here on my local area network. So I'll be getting this victim Linux host to open up a reverse shell. What that will do is go back through the firewall because the firewall will allow connections out by default. So that's going to connect through to me, the attacker. Now by default, the firewall is going to stop most connections. This is why I need the reverse shell. I need the connection to come from the victim back to me. So anyway, we're going to use this reverse shell to connect through to the victim Linux host and attack the Windows PCs on the network. And what that's going to do is kill them. So I am just being particularly mean. So this is a copy of the code I'll be using and there'll be a link to this in the description below. I'll go through it more as I use each command on a step-by-step -step basis. So, in VirtualBox I have Linux Mint 17 open and I haven't patched this yet. So let's take advantage of that. So opening up terminal on my own system, I'm going to take advantage of an attack vector the system administrator there has left open to me in leaving his username lying around, a service open and available through the firewall, and not only that, he's used uh, the industry standard super secure password of PASSWZRD, guaranteed to withhold dictionary attack for all of one millisecond maybe, or two milliseconds if you're lucky. Oh. Right, it's going to open another tab up. Now I'm going to start netcat, opening a port on my own system to port 80, standard internet port, HTTP. I'm, I'm using port 80 to make it more difficult for a system admin or instant analyst to find out what's been going on. Port 80 connections are common as mud. So next I want to create a temporary pipe file with first in, first out abilities. I'll be using this exploit I posted yesterday, which creates a null variable and then executes some command afterwards. I'm keeping the echo hello at the end because without it, it kind of just makes a big mess on the screen. It's okay, we get a segmentation fault. Oh well, never mind. Now the next command is more difficult to talk about. Now this is going to take a shell, reading the contents of this back pipe file I just created, piping it through netcat, and it also pipes commands back into the shell from that file. Okay, this is kind of difficult to talk about and describe, so bear with me, I'm just going to run the command and you'll see what happens because of it. Well, in this case, we just get hello at the end. No problem. Come over here, and we have connection accepted. Cool. Check the host name, and we find I'm using LM17 VBox, because that's the name I've given to that Linux Mint host. Who am I? I am the user quids. The normal way of using the sudo command is you type in sudo and then some command. Now the next line would be asking you for your sudo or root user password. But that won't work here in this netcat reverse shell. What I have to do is pass the password into sudo and then type in the command I want. So this is what we're going to do here. We're going to echo the password into sudo, and then I'm going to display the contents of the shadow file. There's no real reason to actually display the contents of the shadow file, I just want to make something happen in sudo so I can start elevating my privileges. Because I can't just type in sudo su from there, it just doesn't seem to work. So the contents of the shadow file, so I could take the password here and start cracking it. Excellent! <laughs> but I already know the password here. So. Now let's type in sudo su. Who am I? I am the user root now. 
Now I'm going to install a pen testing package for THC IPv6, which provides a variety of IPv6 pen testing tools. Some rather handy tools in there. Quite easy enough. I have to get installed that package. Now let's move things around a bit, and I'm going to open up the Windows host in the virtual machine. So that's that one there. What are you doing? Wake up. So I do have to take a bit of a guess as to when this is completed. Anyway, whilst I'm waiting, let's start the task manager. And to now paste this command here. ATK6 flood router 26 using the Ethernet Zero network card. Of course, if I wasn't sure about what network card I'm actually using, I could do if config. We can see right here, it is using ETH0. All right, that's about enough. So I'm just gonna kill everything now. Come back to Windows system and you'll find it is completely unresponsive and dead. I go across to my system monitor and you'll find my CPU is working pretty hard there. So what has happened against that Windows system? Well, I have told it there are numerous IPv6 routers available. So what it tries to do is connect to every one. And in the process of doing that, it just got itself completely mixed up and it just doesn't know what to do. The only result is a complete crash. The CPU runs at maximum now forever. Linux, on the other hand, just takes a look at all these router advertisement packets that are going around and just says, whatever, and ignores it. Now notice one thing in the media, they've been saying, well, don't use credit cards on the internet now. But I find it difficult to believe that credit cards could be lost this way because, well, if my bank's anything to go by, they use Flash for validation here on internet payments. Of course, Flash has got worse problems than shell shock, but um, just because Shellshock is around now, you don't have to stop using credit cards on the internet. And anyway, if website creators have done their job, this exploit can't even work. History will tell us though, they probably haven't done their job properly on many websites. So we're going to now see what will happen in the future. I can't tell. Anything like this, if I get a reverse shell into a website, it's pretty much game over for it. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.